I'm back again after getting another butt whooping in our local walleye <laughs> league. What do you know? But the cool thing about fishing local leagues is it's like one of the best ways to learn learn local waters, learn how people are catching fish, because somebody always catches them. And we were uh, fishing shallow weeds, pitching plastic, slip bobbers, whatnot, but the fish were just scattered out. And uh, I asked my buddy Jason Barr to hop in the boat with me today, because they won it, <laughs> fishing shallow weeds, but they were covering water with kind of a simple technique, but there was a few, modif oh, there's a bluegill. There was a few modifications that he did to it to, uh, yeah, make the whole system just work a little bit better, catch more fish, cover more water, and have less headaches. So let's dive into it. Let's break it down a little bit. Learn from the guys who actually got it done on game day. Almost any lake with a, a good amount of weeds, a good stocking program, there's, there's fish in the weeds, and they're there all year long. Uh, it gets better the later the year goes, but it's just a great way to search fish and search and find fish. And, and once you find them, you can do whatever, bobber them, throw plastic at them, but covering water with these spin drift hooks uh, is, is really, really fun. And I do like that half ounce, just because it gets us below all those uh, small fish that we don't want to catch. The predators are definitely on the bottom of the lake, and that's how we target them, is, is go a little bit deeper, go a little bit slower, and uh, again, let the fish tell us what they want to eat, so. What I think is cool is it's middle of the day, lunchtime, barely a ripple on the water, sunny, Catching walleyes. Don't gotta wait till prime time, although this will get even better It'll later get better in the day. So and, and don't not to mention it's the middle of July. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, uh, thanks for putting up with me, man. And uh Yeah, you wanna eat this one? Nah, let's let it go. All I've right. been eating uh more of everything than I should be <laughs> lately. So obviously pulling crawlers through the weeds, weed flats is nothing new. But like I said, there's a couple of different interesting tweaks that these fellows have been doing to help catch more fish and avoid some headaches that I'll talk about in a little bit. One of those headaches is bluegills. Is it dead? Anytime you're pulling a crawler through the weeds, it's constantly brr, brr, and you're getting picked and having to reel in, see if you have bait on there. And so one of the things that I learned from Jason is I'm always grabbing like an eighth ounce bullet weight to run through the weeds. He's using a half ounce tungsten. This is a VMC half ounce tungsten weight that I use for punching weed mats, bass fishing, largemouth, right? And the reason for the heavier weight is you're basically getting down through that top layer of little tiny bluegills. You're still obviously going to catch plenty of bluegills, have lots of bluegill bites, but when you see you know, the little silver dollar ones sitting in the water column, they're almost always on the tops of the weeds and right under the surface, snapping at bugs and stuff. So you honestly, I would say what? Jay's catch like a three quarters less, yeah. <laughs> less bluegills than you would if you were using an eighth ounce or even a quarter ounce weight. You don't have to worry about losing tungsten where in Minnesota we got chain pickerels, northern pike. And uh, guys don't like using tungsten for walleye things and stuff, or even bass things, because you can go through $50 worth of weights in a day bass fishing. But you're running a four or six foot leader through these weeds, you're not gonna lose that weight. You're gonna lose that hook maybe after you retire your leader. You can fish with that all day, especially if you do like eight pound suffix braid main line to a swivel, you're never gonna have to retie that. And so, yeah, keeps the bluegills away. And also, a nice thing about getting down below that top layer of bluegills, you're also not pulling these baits above the weeds. You're getting right down in them. And it's sunny, it's calm. The bite with this is honestly better with a little more wind. But when it's sunny and calm, those fish are buried down tighter in the weeds and are less likely to jump up out of them. So you're getting through that top layer down right in their face and crossing paths with them. So I got a little bead here, a little swivel. Like I said, a four or six foot fluorocarbon leader, about eight pound test. This is another key part, VMC spin drift hook with a half of a crawler. You can see that's obviously not laying very straight and it's designed to make that crawler twirl down there and just look delicious in the water. One of the things that makes this VMC spin drift hook so nice is it's got a swivel attached to the eye of the hook. My goodness, does that save on line twist because this bait is constantly doing the tornado under the water. It's also got a little bit of a bar, you can't see with the crawler, but there's a little barb underneath there to help keep that crawler head pinned up to the top of the bait versus sliding down on the shank. And so just having that extra swivel along with the one on the top end of your leader, line twist is no worry. And just there's something special 
about the way that that thing spins in the water that they come up and pounce on it. And then you're gonna catch a little bit of everything doing it. Anytime you're fishing in the weeds, you're gonna catch everything there because food is there, right? Bluegills are there, perch are there, shiners are there, everything is there. Bass, northern walleyes, because they're all feeding on the same thing. And you troll them at about one mile per hour. You gotta adjust that a little bit up or down based on how deep you're fishing, but one mile per hour in a you know, 10 to 17 foot weed flat. And I don't care how clear the water is, there are fish up in shallow weeds all year. Spring through fall, you obviously have a population of fish that are out in deep water on the edge all year because there's there's food in those weeds that are gonna be there. And so you just wanna make sure you get it out a little ways behind the boat. You don't have to bomb too far because then you're gonna be dragging through more weeds and it's gonna take more time to reset. But I would say about a 50 foot cast, there's a fish, and that is not a bluegill. That's really good time. Let's see if my brain can handle fighting a fish and talking. So just get it 50-ish feet out the back of the boat. You wanna follow me back here? And I don't keep my bail open like you saw there. I leave it shut, because with that mushier rod, what I'm doing is I'm feeling with the tip, and if I'm feeling a bite that's not a bluegill, I'll just lower the rod back a little bit and let it mush up and then lean into them. So you're not playing the finger game and, and letting them feed line. You're just dropping that tip back and with a half of a crawler, basically if they bite, you're gonna get them. There's not much of a, a window for them to pick the bait off. And this is a, no way, it's a bass that stayed deep until it was within five feet of the boat. Let's pretend that's a walleye because it did everything that a walleye would until right now. How come nobody taught him to jump? Oh, slipper thing. Anyway, the techniques and the tactics were there for a walleye. We've caught walleyes today. We're going to catch some more. <laughs> Just another giant here, folks. I'm telling you. Fish of all sizes eat the crawler. Ow! It's mean. But of course, like I mentioned, you're gonna catch a little bit of everything doing it. Cover water, but it's finessing in this clear water. Man, if they're fussy and you can't get them to react, snapping plastics, or maybe it's too big of a flat and you don't know that spot on the spot to sit there and make repetitive cast ass with a plastic, you're covering water at a mile per hour, and it's actually pretty crazy how much how much water you can cover at that speed and just cross paths with a walleye that's willing to eat or bass, target bass. Rod is all personal preference. Anytime I'm doing anything that's Lindy rig like, I prefer a 7.6 medium light with a really soft, mushy tip. There's a few reasons for that. Like right here, that's a weed. But if you're using too stiff of a rod, you really can't tell the difference between a weed or a fish right away unless they absolutely crush it, right? And so by the time you're kind of like feeling to check and then you feel that fish pull, if you have a stiff rod, they felt you before you felt them. That really soft, mushy tip of a fast or even a mod fast rod can just load up and you can get a sense of what's going, like that's a bluegill. See them pecking there? I can try to pull it away from them like that, little cat and mouse. If it was a stiffer rod, you might feel a tick or whatever, but just knowing what's happening and not having to say, think you have a bite and feeding 50, 60 feet of line back, closing your bale and realizing you're setting the hook on a weed. It's not a bluegill, but we're playing another game of name that species. And this one I'm pretty sure is a wally. Yeah, she's a walleye, boys. We couldn't end it a largemouth bass so we had to make a couple more passes and since we boat flipped the largemouth we might as well keep up with that trend and that and that is a perfect little central minnesota eater what's funny is you see all these tv shows with people catching giant fish and smoking 24 to 27 inches reality is if you can go in a home or a home lake backyard clear water pressured waters catch a handful of eaters in an outing. I mean, I'd take that day in and day out. And this is just one of those techniques that can get you a couple in the live well for a fish fry, catch a few more fish back home.